This is episode 50 of the Andrew Hines Real Estate Investing Podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 50 of the Andrew Hines Real Estate Investing Podcast. Today I have my very own wife, Jordan Campanero, on the show to talk about the single biggest Burr deal. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Burr, that's when you buy a property, you renovate it, you rent it out, and you refinance it with the bank to pull your money back out so that you can repeat. Uh, well, this deal, she bought it at $1 million with her joint venture partner. They put in a million dollars of work, so they're in for a total of $2 million, and they just had it appraised raised at 3.8 million. Yes, that's right, a 1.8 million dollar lift in equity on a property that they actually bought with zero down. So, this is an incredible story. I know it sounds hard to believe, so buckle up. It's going to be a great episode. Some quick housekeeping before we get going. Uh, the Greater Hamilton REI meetup is happening monthly, and our next event is scheduled for Thursday, February 27th. For those of you who have never been, please make sure that you're on our list and you can reach out to me on Facebook or Instagram to get the link, or you can find it in the show notes of this episode. Without further ado, please enjoy this fantastic episode with Jordan and I, episode 50. Here you go. Hello and welcome to the Andrew Hines Real Estate Investing Podcast. I have Jordan Campanero on the show, and if that sounds familiar, it probably should. We'll mm -hmm. get to why in a second. Jordan, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. I drove a long way to be here today. Yes. First off, I want to thank you for coming downstairs and being <laughs> on the podcast. For those of you who haven't heard me mention her a million times on the podcast, Jordan's my wife. And I've talked about this deal that you did a little while ago, a bunch of times. And we've been trying to find a special episode number for you to be on. So episode 50, big milestone yes. for, uh, for the podcast. And since you're very special, I'm happy to have you here. Thank you. I'm excited to finally be on your show. I know my my mother has been on, my brother has been on, and um, finally me. So I'm very excited to be here and episode 50. It's a family podcast. <laughs> but uh, in all seriousness, uh, there's uh, some real good meat and potatoes here today. We're both vegan, so we don't eat meat. We'll call it tofu or uh, falafel. But uh, anyways, there is some very good stuff here because Jordan did a $1 million equity lift project i think it's over a million mm -hmm. you guys are figuring yep on a sevenplex yep here in burlington so i wanted to save the juicy details to the end but wow well, anyway. that's just a <laughs> teaser anyway so um beyond this uh jordan and i regularly play pretend we don't know each other that well on 30 minutes to wealth whenever i'm a guest uh for for whatever reason we don't uh, you know we only have 22 minutes on that show uh but jordan you're the host uh so if you could just tell our listeners and viewers who have not ever seen the show what the show's about and what you do uh that would be fantastic yeah, so my mother and I, um, Carmen, we are co-hosts and we have a TV show called 30 Minutes to Wealth. It airs on CHCH TV and it's Canada wide. And basically it's a real estate based investing show as well. So very similar. We bring on um, guests in all different um, elements of the real estate space. And we go through case studies, teaching people a whole variety of different investing strategies. So it's we have a lot of fun with it. And we're actually just about to air our third season. Yes, I'm excited to see it. I, uh, I had the pleasure yeah. of going going and watching you uh, you record it. So I know yeah. Scott McGilvery's on there a couple more times. Yeah, he actually interviewed us on one episode and it's actually gonna be similar to the topic that we're talking about today because it is such an amazing case study. So um, yeah, it's gonna be a really awesome season. We have a, you know, a really interesting mix of guests coming on this time. So really looking forward to it. Do you mind telling me a, a, like a couple of the guests, like what did you find really cool this season mm -hmm. or, or even in the other seasons? Like what, what did you really love as like episodes that you covered? Yeah, I like kind of um, digging into episodes that are a little bit more unique than we've typically done in the past. So yeah, I would say my favorite episodes so far that we filmed this year that I'm really looking forward to. One, of course, the Scott McGillivray episode because he's interviewing us. So it's a little bit of a different spin than us interviewing our guests, which is more conventional. Um, we have an episode on tiny homes, which I think is really cool. 
Um, and we actually had a guest fly out from Alberta to join us and talk to us about that. Um, we're doing an episode on tax, sustainable development. So there's there's a big range um, of, of topics that we're covering within the real estate space. And I like trying to keep things a little bit more unique as to, you know, offering a variety for our guests or for our viewers. Okay, so tiny homes, just before we move on, um, I ha- I'm not sure I have the exact definition. Tiny homes in my head is like laneway houses. What is So it's basically, um, it could be mobile or it could be on foundation, but it's essentially a property. I believe the actual definition is it has to be under 500 square feet, but it's basically, um, yeah, just a really compact, tiny home. And these are popping up all over the place, but they're starting to, you know, I don't know, we're seeing more of a prevalence of them in Canada. And I think it's kind of a neat option for investors as well as for homeowners that, you know, maybe having a difficult time getting getting into the housing market at the expensive prices that they're at right now. So it's kind of interesting. Yeah, it's kind of like the future. So our our, our Canadian population is pretty much going to be living in tiny homes primarily <laughs> as it gets more and I more expensive. I don't want a tiny home personally for myself. <laughs> we we but, sort of live in a tiny uh, home. It's, not, <laughs> it's it, Anything's tiny for how much clothing you have. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> we have a, we have an entire bedroom for, for Jordan's clothing. Um, yes. so, so hopefully the next house I can have a bedroom for my clothing too. Yeah, hopefully. Um, okay, so so regarding your investing experience, mm-hmm. um, so obviously, like, well, just before we get into that, my take on the show is obviously super expiring. Well, as soon as I found out the show was a thing, I, you know, said, can I be on? Can I be on? And uh, I got yeah. to be on a few episodes yeah. talking about uh, various things. So I think we did one on um, getting to 10 properties and kind of the strategies and building in the financing. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think what the other one. Oh, I interviewed. Profit and Renos. Profit and Renos. So talking about kind of some of the things to look for if uh, if that's p- something people are interested in. And then the other one was uh, talking to Carmen about the deal she did, the development yes, deal. Yes, creating value in real yeah. estate. So a lot of people who have watched this podcast and listened to this podcast have loved the Carmen episode. If you haven't already heard that episode of 30 Minutes to Wealth, definitely go check yeah, it out. Yeah, that was back in season one, in actually. Season one, one of yeah. our first few episodes so that we did. Yeah, so we had a, uh, two season one episodes and one season two episode, I think. If I'm not uh, yes, mistaken. that's right. Okay. Yeah. So definitely worth checking out if, if, uh, if you're listening or watching this podcast and you haven't check it out, definitely worth it. Uh, one thing I love about the show is how structured it is because it's polar opposite to what I do. <laughs> I am very structured, but I know you are as well in, in other elements. But for me, when I'm going on as a, as a host, I feel, I mean, these episodes are, are really short, right? They're under 30 minutes. So we've got to get to the point really quick. So for me, it's very important to have an outline of what I want to cover. Carmen, on the other hand, is completely my opposite in that regard. She's a lot more off the cuff and, and, and carefree. So I think we kind of balance each other really well. But I, I really like to have a structure to my episodes. Yeah, and I can see that. I know, like, I've actually really enjoyed that. So we've kind of worked it, on it as a, a couple team. Yeah. Uh, you know, figuring out because in 22 minutes how the heck are you going to get to the meat and potatoes like I have like a whole hour here to like to just yeah, draw to just it out talk right and, yeah so. um, it definitely it's it's very limited but I think it it, it bodes well for tv because yeah. people don't always necessarily have the time to sit down and, and, and spend that kind of time when you're you know a Sunday morning or Saturday morning when you're you're watching tv so I think or for that capacity YouTube, right? yeah it's uh yeah, it's, it's definitely a different kind of feel than a podcast, which you can listen yeah. to a lot more. So my thought with with this, and you can tell me your thought, you know, because a lot of our investor viewers, listeners are thinking, you know, building a brand because as an investor, you kind of have to have one, uh, you know, whether you're big or small, you have to have a reputation. If you mm-hmm. want to get private financing, it's a good idea to document your work so that people, you know, such mm-hmm. as yourself, Jordan, you're in the mortgage business. You see somebody that has a track mm-hmm. record of doing really good deals. Yeah. you're gonna you're gonna want to lend to those people right like for sure. more inclined to for sure yeah. so brands important a lot of people you gotta kind of figure what way are people consuming content what's the best way to reach them and i think be everywhere is kind of the thing mm-hmm. um so it's really cool you guys are on tv you're on youtube uh i think you're talking about getting onto a podcast platform as well at some yeah point. we are in the process of of launching um a, a podcast for the show so again, and they're they're going to be shorter episodes, but yeah, definitely. Will it just be the same thing? It'll be. Yeah, it'll just be our episodes converted to podcast format. 
Yeah. Okay. So again, like be everywhere. I think that's the big thing. And that's why I make sure that this podcast is on YouTube because some people just like to listen while they're sitting at their computer. So, mm-hmm. um, but it, getting into the investment side of things. So yeah, Jordan, I think you've got a handful of deals. Well, I know, I know your portfolio fairly well, um, but your most recent one is, is a really cool one. And then mm-hmm. you've, you've got some other stuff. So why don't you just tell our listeners and viewers what uh, what you've gotten yourself into uh, from a real estate investing standpoint. Yeah, so I'm not involved too much um, from an active standpoint. I work in the real estate space, so I work at a at Pro Funds, a mortgage brokerage, and I'm basically um, managing a department that works with um, you know assisting investors if you have funds available and placing those into different private mortgages so it could be on you know development construction residential home um, so I, I've been in that space and very familiar with that space so I do have some passive investments I also have um, a few properties myself um, one in particular that's going to lend itself really well into the really exciting case study that we're going to talk about today but i have a condo in toronto so uh, that that's just kind of um you know i've had that for a few years i rent it out but it, it's really just kind of sitting for me and just as a nest egg kind of building up with the appreciation in toronto so this uh, case study is more on the active side and it's really my first kind of joint venture real like renovation type style investment and it went amazing so it was definitely a really really awesome um, experience for me okay so digging into the condo Mm -hmm. that one of the things i always appreciate about carmen your mom uh is that she just she'll just say i got a feeling about this and and she Mm -hmm. will she'll she'll kind of reach this uh you know invisible little power in the universe and find a deal that that was apparent and should have been apparent to other people but for some Mm -hmm. reason she was the only one that saw it and i don't know if that directly equates into this but i feel like you were you had some of that going on when you found that condo uh tell the story of how you found the condo that you bought yeah the condo so that was back in 2015 and i really scored with that one um i had been wanting to purchase in toronto for a few years at that point um it really it really was because i wanted to move and live there myself but i had been searching for a long time at that point even still i found the prices to be very expensive even though they're probably half of what they are now um and yeah i had been looking at a couple different open houses seeing some properties and the one property that i saw the one um, condo there in in a certain area that i wanted i had narrowed it down very specifically um just got um just got like taken up it was sold right away so i was with my my brother and my dad and we just went to a local bar across the street um and we were just having a drink and grabbing some lunch and we overheard um a table beside us just just talking and my dad being a really charismatic charismatic kind of fun guy just started you know talking to them and we just ended up connecting and found out that um one of the guys there owned a condo um right next door and he was looking to sell it he had not listed it yet and i ended up connecting with him um and uh, we ended up just doing like a we did a private sale and i ended up um, picking it up for a pretty good price that's see that's amazing like just you think about the the possibilities like so few people it was crazy it was a very odd situation i would have never expected that to just literally fall in my lap out of nowhere we thought we were a little defeated we thought we had lost the property we wanted stumble into a bar meet someone that's selling their property and get it off market like it was so cool so i want to stress here like this is like the law of attraction and action jordan Jordan was just talking thinking about it well you know it's all i heard about oh you know i was very very determined we'll call it the (laughs) bathurst and and king street west uh, area of toronto yeah um, which i've mentioned it before um really good good place i know i've thrown out the around 510 is what what the price point was at that point in time yeah i I bought it for 510 Yeah. yeah and now the numbers are significantly higher i've um I've heard people say, you know, it should be in the million range. I've looked up some comps in the building. It's like around 900. Not bad for four years after mm-hmm. you bought the place. 
Yeah, I, and I feel kind of bad for the individual that uh, I bought it from, but he was one of the first owners yeah. and, you know, it didn't really go up in value too much. But within a year of me owning it, I think it must have gone up by 200000 It was yeah. amazing. Yeah, ever, anyone who bought in 2015, like just really scored big. So yeah. I, I know your your idea of that originally was a, a place to live, mm-hmm. but practicality living in Burlington, working in Burlington, um, that one ended up becoming a rental unit. But aren't you glad you kept it? I'm so glad. I'm never, I never want to sell that property. I want to hold it forever. Yeah, because if, you know, if Manhattan is any indication, that, that's, uh, you know, that's retirement for a few families. And it's a beautiful uh, unit run. too. Like it's, yeah. uh, it's special. I would not be able to give that up. Yeah, I'm wondering if... Um, Maybe you can send me some photos of it and we can post it on the um, in the show notes just yeah. so people can get, you know, get a feel for for just how nice it is. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I don't always do that. It, there's a lot of production that goes into these episodes, so I don't always get to that, but uh, would love to to show some pictures of it. Mm-hmm. Um, OK, so that one's great in, in a couple of things. For one, for the newbies. How did you know how to write a, a private offer? Everybody thinks you need a realtor because realtors know how to write offers. How did you tackle that? Um, it's hard to remember now, but basically because we're in the industry, we, we did have connections. I worked with, a um, a real estate, we had a lawyer review everything, but I believe we just used, uh, like a regular, um, Johnny did, yeah, didn't yeah, he? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You just called, called your lawyer. <laughs> That's what I yeah, love. Like, I'm you like, don't I, don't, remember. I don't really remember because I didn't <laughs> well, really I didn't do, do that much, yeah. to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, I know how to write offers because I've seen so many of them starting the mortgage business, you yeah. know, just like kind of learn you see all because I would get like the bank would like, call me back. They're like, oh, the offer's missing this or it's mm-hmm. missing that. So I kind of learned how to do it myself. But yeah. if you've got a good lawyer yeah. and, and you're working with them on the closing, you can just call them and say, hey, can you write an offer? Mm-hmm. And uh, they should be willing to do it. Yeah. Um, so it might be the Aurea if you're in Ontario, the Aurea form or they might use their own form, but uh, it doesn't have to be the one that the realtors use. Um, so that might be a misconception some people have. I just thought it'd uh, be worth pointing out. Um, but that condo, so that was the start of something mm-hmm. that actually worked out really well for you. Uh, so it started as principal residence, 5% down on a 510 purchase. Uh, you've, you've got some huge equity in that now, though, because it's paid down and it's gone up in value crazy. Uh, so about a year ago, I remember your mom talking about this deal, which she wasn't sure she had the time to do. And uh, I think it even got mentioned to me that it might be an option if I wanted it. And I couldn't see it at the time. So this yeah. is this is this goes back to Carmen having one heck of a vision. Yeah. And Carmen knew you had some equity. And, and tell me about how that all all played out. Yeah, um, I know at first she wasn't 100 percent sure if she was going to do the deal, but she found the property. Um, I believe it was a power of sale and um, or, or something, something along those lines. And she she approached me about it um even though i had never really done anything like that before and i went to see the property and honestly i fell in love with it and people think that's so silly because it really was um you know very very run down and needed a lot of work however um it's this 1800s era um seven unit building and i could see past a lot of you know that kind of ruggedness and I saw the bones behind it and you know some really nice antique trim and I just saw the potential there so I was really excited about it um I knew it was in a, an amazing location and um yeah I, I agreed to partner with her and basically offer um my condo as um um, basically offered up my condo to provide additional collateral and it's it's a little bit confusing but we'll go through it more in we depth will. exactly how that works you ruined my next question because <laughs> what i was gonna say was yeah. uh, was how did how much money did you have to put in and the answer would be nothing out of pocket nothing so this i wanted to draw out because so many people think they might have to join venture i mean you did join venture but that's a different mm-hmm. story uh they or they have to be an active partner or i can't do that deal because i don't have any money well, you didn't actually put in money. You put in available equity that was sitting in that condo that we just yeah. talked about. So you had, you know, nine hundred thousand dollar value on a something with a mortgage, probably around four fifty now, or maybe even less. Mm-hmm. So you've got. I had around five hundred thousand in equity. So yeah, nearly five hundred k in equity. Ah, man, that's not bad. Mm-hmm. Um, for for very little work, aside from 
making a deal happen. Yeah, and yeah. I think a point that I'd love to to stress that I think is so important for real estate investors to understand is is the power of utilizing private financing, and that's how we were really able to do this deal. And I know we're probably going to get into yeah. it a little bit uh, further, but the reason I was able to utilize my condo to purchase this property is all because of private money. Yeah, so walk me through that because we don't really get into the nuts and bolts of private financing as much as we could. Yeah, and I think and it's so important for every real estate investor to, to understand that. Yeah, it's it's gotta be in your toolkit. It's, it's a part of a, a serious sure. real estate investor's toolkit. So if you've got you know, a $900,000 value. I don't know what your appraiser appraised it at the time. Uh, do you recall or is somewhere in that ballpark? Of my condo? Yeah. Um, so I, we just looked at market comps. We didn't okay, get it so, appraised. So you yeah. had you had some comparables uh, and yeah. your valuation was roughly yeah, around- Yeah, nine to 950 range. Okay, so yeah. if, if so, what what kind of valuation were you able to get on that and how did that work to allow you to buy the other place? If you could just explain it in simple terms, not giving not giving specific numbers, but just giving the, the rough idea. So were were you able to secure up to ninety five percent of that nine hundred and fifty thousand dollar value? Um, so it's not exactly the way it works, but basically, um, and and for the you know for the listeners to understand exactly what first off what private financing is, I don't know if everyone's well versed in that, but I but basically um, it. it it is essentially you as a borrower, um, you know, typically working through a brokerage it doesn't have to be, but instead of dealing with the bank, you have private individuals lending you um, the funds and are, are going to be secured on, on your real estate as collateral for that loan. So it's basically just as an investor filling in and being the bank and you lending yeah. from a private person. So it could be someone like me giving you a loan. Exactly. If you said, hey, I need this loan and we weren't married and I didn't trust you, I could, uh, I could actually lend to you and we could secure it on title as yes. a mortgage and I'd be just like TD Bank exactly. or, or any you'd of those other banks. You'd be filling in the shoes of the yeah. bank, you'd be lending me and yeah. we'd have a contract outlining the terms of that loan, what kind of interest rate I would pay you, how long um, you know that term would yeah. be and what the percentage of debt on the property was, so what our loan to yeah. value ratio was. So um, I think it's important to understand first and foremost what that is and then how we were able to utilize that. So with private money, the really amazing benefit is, is truly the flexibility of utilizing this and the power that it can enable you to have. So with private money, um, just to go through a few benefits, but for one, um, you know, quick closings is a huge one and that yeah. did help us to acquire this property. Um, borrowers can be a lot more uh, or purchasers can be a lot more um, aggressive and competitive in their offers. If say you can, if you know you have private financing backing you, you could potentially close on a property in one to two weeks um, versus you know potentially financing with a bank, which may take a couple of months. So to a seller, that could be quite enticing. Um, another one is, is of course, is, is the flexibility and the creativity that we can do. So um, touching on your question, what I was able to do essentially in this case was we were able to take the property that we were purchasing, so that's our Eden property, and we were able to add on the value or the, and the equity available in my condo as a collateral property. So we had about our $500,000 of equity. Mm -hmm. And so basically we grouped the two properties together and offered our, our private investor security on both parcels of real estate, therefore increasing the total value that that investor has security on and therefore being able to increase our loan amount so we could yeah. borrow a larger loan amount. Um, and it enabled us to actually come in and purchase the property, which was about one million. And it allowed us to come in with all of our renovation funds, um, all of our closing costs, as well as an interest reserve. So we even built our interest expense into the loan. So we didn't have to come out of pocket with anything. Okay, so so to recap, you had two properties, yeah. and we know that if we work with a bank, they they typically wanna they wanna see twenty percent in the deal. So your 20% in the deal didn't come from putting 20% cash. You just said, hey, why don't you just secure a mortgage on my other property, which has, you know equates to more than 20%. And now you've got security on that. So it, when, when a bank looks at loan to value, which is your total loan compared to your total value, mm -hmm. well, if you add the two properties together, the value is much more. 
and add and add all the loans together. And as long as you can maintain that loan to value, whatever your criteria was, um, then the deal can happen. So yeah. so this is a zero down deal that happened because of available equity. And I think the real simple way of looking at it for for anyone who's listening, watching is that this is a way of unlocking your equity. If you can use private money, secure it, even in second position, even if you have a bank first mortgage, exactly. and that's you can go behind those properties. Mm -hmm. Like I've got a portfolio of real estate and I look at that. When I'm looking at deals, I think, well, you know, worst case scenario, if I didn't have the funds to close something, I have available equity and I could just go to someone like ProFunds and have them blanket, you know, work with their lenders and blanket my properties. And I say blanket, meaning put a mortgage on all of them. Yes. And I can unlock maybe even 500 grand across yeah, those. Yeah, and that's, that's such a great point because, it, you know, I had a first mortgage on my property already. Um, that was a fixed mortgage. So I wasn't looking to break that. However, because I did have quite a substantial buildup of equity, we put a second mortgage on for the remainder of that equity. So it, it worked out really well. Right. So you got a deal zero, zero down. All your renovation funds were covered. So to get you from uh, A to B, and I know you were the, the silent partner here. You were the you weren't the working partner. Uh, so so Carmen arranged who was going to do the renos, kind of did all the pulling the strings. Yeah, I I participated in that as well, but definitely she was much more active on that just because she naturally has yeah. much more experience. Right. And this is a property I, I remember looking at it before it was done, kind of making my comments on it because I'm always just curious, especially when it comes to seven plexes with a million dollars a lift or 1.5. <laughs> Actually, it's 1.8. 1 1.8. 1 oh, it just keeps getting <laughs> yeah. better. Um, yeah. So anyways, I can I can tell some of the things I saw was there was a rewire done in the building. So the electrical was all updated. There was like breakers instead of fuse boxes. They got rid of some knob and tube, I'm assuming. Um, yes. new, there was a new boiler in there. And then cosmetically, can you tell uh, can you tell our listeners and viewers uh, what what has been done or just an idea of what has been done? Yeah. So, um, again, like the bones of the property was really were all there, but it definitely needed some love and um, it needed to be um, just really brought back to life. So we on the exterior, we, we redid that. Um, we ended up going with an amazing light pink stucco with black accents, so black trim and windows and doors, and it looks amazing. Um, the interiors, we did a lot of um, cosmetic stuff, um, opening up some rooms, um, new floors, paint. So it was really efficient reno. We did whatever needed to be done, and it, uh, it, it turned out really beautiful. So yeah, look, I mean, from my take on it, it looks like mostly cosmetics. Mm -hmm. uh, the kitchens uh, were new. Um, you know, a lot of the systems were in place. It just needed some love. Yeah. And, and yeah. we did some really cool things. Like we wanted to keep the integrity of the home. So we tried to keep all of the, you know, amazing accents that gave that home character. We just wanted to, um, you know, make it more presentable. So for instance, we had like this really ugly old brick wall with a fireplace. And we, we ended up painting that brick wall white. And we did a really cool pastel blue fireplace mantle. So we, we just, um, we did it's some really kind of unconventional, but you know, really neat um, interior finishings and painting. And we we did furnish a few of the units too. So, yeah. And uh, Carmen, I think like she sourced majority of these all these different furnishings and items on yeah. the GG and Marketplace. So it was really all it was very hands on. Yeah. So anyone who's seen the Carmen episode or follows Carmen, she's yeah. just, you know, garage sailing and antiquing is kind of her hobby. So mm -hmm. <laughs> finding really cool furniture was no problem here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to link the Instagram page for Eden Manor, which is the name of the building. I'm going to link that in the show notes. So if anyone wants to check out what that building looks like and how cool it is, it's a pink building. And yeah, it's, I in, love it. it's in Burlington, uh, not far from the ghost, the Burlington ghost station, Yeah, not far from downtown. And anyone who knows Burlington real estate to think that you would get a sevenplex for a million dollars in Burlington mm -hmm. when single family homes regularly go for over a million dollars is, mm -hmm. uh, and not even nice ones, just, just, you know, okay homes. Um, you know, it's, it's an incredible deal. And, yeah. uh, yeah, like, again, the vision that your mom had for that to, to do it, 
mm-hmm. and then your uh, smart decision to uh, to jump on board. Yeah, um, I will. I will say I really do like that the the, the character was kept. You know the old yeah, the old that tall was really trim, important to us. Tall trim was a, that's a huge thing, right? Because that's expensive mm-hmm. to remake, and it was just left in place and really adds character. Jordan's good good transition. Let's dig right into the numbers because I know that uh, you you had an episode on Thirty Minutes to Wealth where you talking about this, mm-hmm. so you're prepared. Can you walk me through the numbers? Yes, for sure. So basically, um, so we, we talked about the purchase price. So um, we, we got the property for about a million. Um, right up top, we did, uh, we had an appraisal done on the property and it, it came in at 1.2 or 1.3. So right up top, there was, you know, a two, $300,000 lift just from acquiring the property. So buying it under market value. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, so how it worked was we brought my, we, we brought my condo in as additional collateral. There was about $500,000, um, dollars of equity available there. So basically what we did in order to make this structure work is we had to get an appraisal as is, and then we had to also determine what the projected um, on complete value of our property would be so basically when we when we raised um, the financing to fund this we could make sure that you know we had enough so that when we are on completion we were still in good standing so we had projected that the property would be worth around 2.8 million on completion um, and we had financing we had about two million dollars in financing come in so how that looked was as one million went towards the acquisition of the property. Um, majority of the funds went towards the renovation costs. And then as I mentioned, we did pay, it was private private money, so we paid 10% to our investors throughout the year that the, that the, the funds were lent. So we had um, actually built in that 10% in an interest reserve so that we didn't have to come out of pocket with those costs. And then of course, legal fees, closing costs and financing as well. So that covered everything so you never had to reach into your pocket so aside not one for like cent. <laughs> aside for running to the store yeah. and like buying a couple of i know at the end we were buying a couple of garbage cans yeah. and, and some some stuff for the kitchens uh which was all reimbursed out of the company's account for that yes yes um, so so more or less none of your own money in uh, aside from incidentals that's right and you were, you know, you were just doing a favor getting involved there at the end because it's a family deal. But, uh, you know, normally as the money partner in most relationships, uh, that person would do absolutely nothing. But this mm-hmm. was exciting. This is a cool project, right? This was right? really cool. And so basically what happened was, is we had majority of our renovation funds um, held back in trust because we obviously raised, you know, $2 million. The That property was only worth a million. And then plus we had the collateral of my condo. So we were pretty, you know we were fully financed but collectively it, it was it was um secure enough from a from a loan to value perspective yeah. that the lenders were still comfortable but in order to make that even more comfortable for them we did hold majority of the funds back in a in a construction trust account and it's very similar to like a purchase plus improvements type of situation where we would draw on the funds in increments as we completed our renovation right. work on the property until we advanced our full renovation um, you know, funding and got towards our own complete valuation. Yeah, so for, for those who aren't familiar with that process, so in Jordan's specific example, Pro Funds Mortgages and Valor Capital work together. So there's a company called Valor Mortgage Services. They have a trust account. So anything where, where there's a, a property, well, so Valor, oh, so Valor yeah. Capital has yeah, a trust account. Yeah, it would be yeah. Valor Capital Management. So, they have an actual construction um, trust, trust account. account. So they have a trust account, which means there needs to be proof and documentation for any money to leave. So therefore, uh, as as work is done, the invoices get submitted and they can actually be paid from the money in that trust account. So that's exactly. sort of the way that Valor does it, which I like. I think that's super streamlined, especially for from a lender's perspective. Uh, it's a lot of security there. It's a uh, win-win then, for yeah, both, for like everyone. truly, because for the investor, um, or the lenders, they feel more comfortable knowing that, um, you know, funds are only being released as value is being created. So your loan to value is never going to be over leveraged. And from the borrower, it's so great to know that we can raise all the capital we need and it can sit there and, and, and be drawn upon when we need it. So we don't have to go back and, and put new mortgages in place every time we have a construction cost. So that was a yeah. huge, huge help for us. Yeah, what I, you know, definitely, and I've been a, a customer of the brokerage as well as having yeah. my license there, um, just 
you know, the simplicity of it is, is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there are some some expenses to that. Uh, you guys got a pretty good deal because you're, uh, you know, you're pretty trustworthy and you have, you have a great pay, character. We did pay. Uh, you did, you did still pay. Pretty standard rates. <laughs> but, you know, in, in all fairness, like as a lender, like I want to lend to people who I trust their character. And obviously mm -hmm. um, you, you guys have got a fantastic reputation. Hey, that's why I married you, right? <laughs> Bad joke. So Mike, we'll cut that one out. Obviously, character is a, ma a major part in that. It helps get deals done. And, and Carmen, when she, mm -hmm. she has a deal, I think there's a lot of people who are ready to, uh, to fund it. Uh, mm -hmm. So that never hurts. Uh, okay, so you were in. So here's how I like to do it on my show. I know you, you have your show and you do things a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. So I like to do, what did you purchase it for? And then what were your improvements? Um, so total cost of improvements, what, what approximately were they? Well, we grouped everything in and oh, about with interest a, and everything? Yeah, it was about okay. a million. In so a total million with everything. for everything. So we're going to say a million to acquire and then another million to, to do all your renos, pay for your interest, legal mm -hmm. fees, land transfer. Everything. Everything. Did yeah. the whole shebang. So you're in for two million. Uh, purchase and reno to, for two million. So let's just type that in. Have you had your new appraisal yet or are you in the process? We have. We so. have gotten our new appraisal and um it actually came in at 3.8 million okay so 3.8 million dollars so just want to take a moment to and i am biased i'll admit that so uh but to congratulate my lovely wife for doing the single biggest and best burr that's ever been talked about on this show <laughs> so a, a 1.8 million dollar instant equity well it wasn't instant it took a year Took a year. Took a year. But it was a million dollars more than we thought we would make. Like so when you we thought bought you'd be it, a we thought we'd be, we thought we'd be around 2.7, 2.8 million on completion when we got it and we would have yeah. made maybe 800,000. We ended up, it ended up getting appraised for 3.1 million dollars more. So it was yeah. fantastic. So, so let's just say that one more time. 3.8 million when, when the original appraiser was being all conservative saying 2.8. 2.8 mm -hmm. came back when it was done and said whoa this is really cool yeah what do you think like why why so much higher so a few things um i think it comes down as well to um our strategy at the end and how we decided to rent it out and, and, and you know the cash flow that um the property seeing as well as it's just i think the renovations went so amazing there is such a unique charm here and, and such a desire for huge interest for people wanting to rent this space so it just um i think it was just a whole series of everything and again like the location is fantastic yeah, location's really good. I mean, this is where appraisers can differ. Of course, the market in Burlington's been hot, so a whole yeah. year passed. Um, you know, there, there's a lot yeah. of market factors that would have changed in that time. I think one of the main things was um, when we completed the property, um, we decided to do short term furnished rentals um, as well yeah. as unfurnished rentals. And those shorter term furnished rentals are minimum 30 days, but yeah. they were they are seeing higher rents. Um, so you were able to show the higher rents to the appraisers. Exactly. And again, here's the beautiful thing about about multi residential uh, lending mm -hmm. is that appraisers and lenders look at your income. And, yeah. and the income, not yours personally, but the property's income. So. Yeah, the property, yeah, the income generated through the property. And that was huge for us. Um, we wanted to kind of structure it that way because we thought, you know, it's so lucrative to do these furnished rentals uh, shorter term. And as well, we can consistently go up in our, in our rental prices as, you know, the market kind of speaks to that. So it, um, yeah, it, it was a really good, combination um, that led to that higher higher praise value so now we need to uh, the husband and wife couple are gonna have to uh, do a deal like that together and oh, uh, I'd love to and get uh, get another 1.8 million dollar lift uh, that sounds nice yeah it was it was hard because you know we had a couple options when the property was finished like do we sell this you know and and you know we pay off our two million dollar debt and we you know we pocket 
you know, that kind of spread, like $1.8 million, or do we, you know, do we refinance it? So we did decide to hold it. Um, Please never sell. No, the property is incredible. We love it. So um, we're actually financing a new mortgage at 65%. Yeah. So that was the next question. Yeah. So 65% is actually a little bit less than I thought you'd get. But I mean, I guess maybe you just didn't want to take the whole amount. Well, and the other thing is, like, banks aren't just looking at loan to value that the, the ratio, they have an income mm -hmm. ratio they need to hit, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing that because otherwise I know Carmen, she would have been like, let's get it all <laughs> uh, yeah. and use it for well, another deal, right? Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're putting a mortgage in place for around $2.5 million. We're going to be paying off our $2 million debt and we're going to actually pull out 500000 split it 50-50 and have that towards, you know, investing in something else. And we still get to keep our property and it cash flows as well. So it's kind of like a, a really, truly a win-win yeah. So a couple of things I want to draw out here, because uh, I know we've kind of we've, we've dug into some nuts and bolts that some of our listeners are going to be very familiar with. Some mm -hmm. won't. Um, but with this. OK, so we've got basically 500. So I calculated 65 percent to be uh, 2.47 million. So give or take roughly 500 grand because you're in for two million. Yeah, we've got about 2.47 million, which it which is 65 percent of the new uh, the new value, the 3.8 million, which. Damn, that's ridiculous. Yeah, I was looking yeah. at the appraisal the other day and it was amazing. <laughs> yeah, this is this is why you, you just don't sell. You just just don't. Because if you sell, you know what I wanted to draw out here. If you sold that, sure, you'd have 1.8 million and then the government would take. Well, I mean, if it's in the corp and you kept rolling it over, you might only pay the 13 percent uh, tax here in Ontario. Uh, but if you take it out, then you're going to end up being in the ballpark of, of 50 percent tax rate. So you're only keeping half of that. Uh, and then you got to go find where to put that money to work anyway. So, and you don't want to yeah. just go spend it all. Yeah. Now you've got a piece of prime real estate in a great area and you still got 35% equity in the deal, which you can use in the future yeah. with private financing again as well to do more deals. So yeah. you don't need to sell it. So, so many people out there think you need to sell a deal to no. be able to, to do the next one or to do a bigger one. I would argue just find ways to creatively leverage or, or better utilize your assets. Exactly. And that's how the whole like full circle with private financing comes into play because um, once this refinance is solidified, um, that you know mortgage that second mortgage hold on my condo will also be released so i'll have my five hundred thousand yeah. in 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 um, equity still there that's the benefit with private money is you can repay these loans at any time so say you finish a you know a, a renovation in six months you can pay that out with no penalty so i'm paying that out and now i can use that same equity to purchase and do the same thing on another deal in conjunction with with the subject property that we just finished so it, it definitely is is worthwhile to to hold on to these i think as well absolutely well um so just looking at it like this i mean this is one deal that you did mm -hmm. where 1.8 million dollars was the lift so some yeah you know, some people refer it to as your lift right the, the amount of money you made it go up in mm -hmm. value half of that because since half the deal is yours that your 50 50 partnership uh half of that is yours so almost a millionaire from one deal one deal yeah that's pretty crazy and over a million error with with the condo so you know i'm gonna have high expectations yeah. after this one <laughs> <laughs> how do i compete how do i compete on the next deal when we do one together but you know what we're gonna we're gonna have to do a real smart one together mm -hmm. um so I, I, you know again it's uh, i'm a very biased host because i already know all the answers <laughs> we were talking about this before i'm like how am i supposed to interview you I, I already know what you're going to say. And, and uh, you know, Jordan honestly, knows me. honestly, I love that because it's, it's the same thing when you're on my show. I almost know what you're going to say, but in a way, I love that because I know I know what to expect. Yeah. This this deal is going to be really hard for people to um, to stomach. It just, it's, it's like mind boggling. Um, we're going to have to do... I've been I've been talking about this and maybe by the time this episode comes out, I'll already have it. But, uh, you know, starting a YouTube channel for education and site visits and, and stuff like that. And 
this will definitely have to be one of the ones that gets profiled to show real life. This is a real deal. Like insane, none of these numbers are, are made up. These are, you know, exactly how we did it. So I think it's important for people to realize that, yeah, that this one was really amazing, but mm. these kinds of deals are possible yeah. and you don't have to have a bank, you know, yeah. full of funds available. If you have other real estate that yeah. you can leverage, you can do a similar type of, of situation and okay so i'll speak to some of the things since i know you were you were uh, not the working partner here you were the money partner so i'll speak to mm -hmm. some of the things that caught me and it kind of deterred me from wanting the property when i first saw it one was there was a lot of tenants it was filled with tenants mm -hmm. all seven units and some of them were paying extremely low rents yeah and and they were filthy some of the units were just filthy yeah stinky there was one unit that oh. my, my eyes actually watered. I couldn't breathe. I've never. It's well, there the was worst a hoarder in one. It, it yeah. literally there were like DVDs and video games, floor yes. to ceiling, oh, everywhere. Yeah. That guy had a collection. You felt like you were in a cave. It was a or pawn something. shop. It was like literally yeah. a pawn shop. It was in a very unit. challenging to get him out. Very very challenging. And uh, can we talk about these <laughs> these methods, <laughs> or do we have to not say? <laughs> Real we'll keep challenging. That one a secret. Okay, so uh, so there. Um, you know, there there was probably some conversations had and some negotiations to get some of these people to to go. For sure, yeah. yeah. There, you know, we've talked about cash for keys on this show, and I'm not sure exactly. I actually don't know how you guys did it, but I'm sure you don't know everything that happened either, since you were actually not not the uh, working partner here. I was familiar with what happened. Were, yes. Okay. Um, anyway, so yeah, and then like the the cat pee unit was particularly enough to make a lot of people run for the hills. Um, there were, you know, there were some bricks and you know stuff uh, that were shaling away um, on the corners from just mismanagement for mm -hmm. years. So mm -hmm. I think that with these bigger numbers, people get afraid, and I, you know, myself included, of just how long it would take to cycle out the tenants, complete the renos re-rent it get out of that private money and and get to your profit um your mother carmen uh huge inspiration to me mm -hmm. because she just she knows no fear when it comes to that stuff like she always makes uh you know from what i know of her makes really smart decisions on deals she knows she can win on and yeah. uh and in that belief right she just knows the value of what she's doing mm -hmm. on these big deals and and uh this is one for the ages. So, but it, yeah. for her, it's like run of the mill. This is a, this is just another deal, um, which is incredible. So that's why uh, we'll have to have her on uh, again in the near future to talk uh, talk more about some of her deals too. For sure. Um, okay. So, do you know anything about your cash flow numbers or what they will be? Yeah, around eleven hundred a month. Okay, so around eleven hundred a month. So that's pretty incredible. So if we wanted to do a quick little calculation of just, I mean, we can't calculate a return on investment, but what we can do is we can calculate a return. So you got a cash flow of 1100 a month, which is going to work out to be, uh, let's just see, about 13200 a year. Then you're going to have your principal pay down. So your mortgage is paying down each and every month, uh, and I like to say 3% typically, but in your case, because it's a quicker amortization, you're gonna be paying it off pretty aggressively. Mm -hmm. So we could even say 4% pay down on your new mortgage of uh, 2.47. So we'll just say that times 0.04. So in the first year, you're probably gonna pay off about $100,000 of that mortgage. Uh, so yeah, when you work in big numbers, it, it tends to come mm -hmm. down uh, you know, and return big as well. So cash flow isn't huge, but pay down is huge. And then we've got appreciation. Mm -hmm. If you think about the Burlington market, it's obviously been hot, but I'm not even going to go into big numbers. I'm not even going to be aggressive here. I'm just going to say, what if we even did 3%, just being conservative, 3% appreciation on your current value of 3.8 million. And that is going to be equal to about 11, or sorry, 114,000. So when you add all these three things together, you're getting $226,000 a year in return on something that you have absolutely nothing into and it already paid you, you know, assuming your mortgage goes through everything as you intend, mm -hmm. will have given you 250 in your pocket, 250,000 each, each, each <laughs> yeah. and you'll both be splitting uh, a return of 226 a year. Granted, that's not all in cash, that's not all something you can use today, mm -hmm. but it is yours in the long run. Well, actually ours, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, hey, I married smart and, and hey. in so many ways. So anyways, no, I, I really do appreciate you. And I, I think that uh, 
I think that you made a smart decision uh, to uh, to do this deal with your mom and and uh, I'm hoping you got some of that uh, that little feel. It seems like you do. You have that feel for a good deal. So especially with your condo, you showed they showed they had it there too. So yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully I can I can do something similar again because that was it was definitely an amazing experience. And I think just having the right tools to know how to acquire the property and be able to to come in competitively and being able to utilize, you know, collateral real estate to to come in with all of the costs, because I mean, if it was just if, if, if I didn't have that property, I wouldn't be able to participate in this deal because I, I, I didn't have obviously yeah. $500,000 in cash sitting around, but I did have that. So I think, um, you know, it's important to look at all the different possibilities that, you know, that you can do in acquiring real estate that a lot of people just aren't aware of. So on that note, like, yes, there are ways you got to bring some value to a joint venture, right? Yeah. You, you know, if, if you're not going to be working, Mm -hmm. And you're not going to be coaching or providing expertise or, mm -hmm. you know, not saying that you didn't, but, you know, you'll have to be bringing money, right? There's, there's, you got to add value in some way. So in, not everybody can have a, uh, a Carmen for a mom. Um, family deals are fantastic. Yeah. Um, you know, if you have a family member that's open to real estate investing, they're probably the, the first place to look. Because yeah. because they're the ones that you can add value to. There's a trust there. Uh, it's I think be a lot uh, easier. for a first deal, like a, a joint venture, is a really amazing way to go. Because I would have never been able to tackle something of this caliber on my own, especially as a first deal or even as the first few deals that I would ever do. Um, but yeah, partnering with someone that has experience, that has the knowledge, um, really made a huge difference for me. Yeah, well, obviously, you know, incredible deal. Again, still, still hard to believe. I'm, uh, I'm pumped about it though, and uh, you know, I'm looking forward to us uh, putting that money to work. That, uh, that little uh, 250 pull out. That's gonna be, uh, that's gonna be fun. So, um, Jordan, I want to switch gears because I've talked about you so many times in this podcast, and uh, we're kind of getting towards the end. Um, first off, just before we do that, if people wanted to learn more about you um wanted to learn more about pro funds like mm -hmm. where do you want to send them do you want to you want to send them to your your stuff or or to pro funds or, or you tell me yeah yeah so you can definitely go to profunds.ca um that's our website um and there's a lot of information there that is is going to be really useful to both investors um lenders and borrowers alike and then if they wanted to check out yeah. the property what's the uh, what's the instagram handle for that yeah it's it's at Eden Manor, um, E-D-I-N-M-A-N-O-R. I haven't really built that one up too much yet, but you can also check it out on Airbnb as well. Um, we do have a webpage called Once Upon a Stay and all of the properties that Carmen is involved in and myself are gonna be on there. So if you're interested, you can go there and then you can see the whole collection of um, of real estate that that's currently you know either furnished and, and and being rented out awesome okay so yeah i'll make sure that the the link for uh you know manor is in the description and if the other one's available then then i'll add that one in there too perfect um okay so hobbies when you're not investing in real estate as a joint venture partner non-working partner mm, hobbies um hanging out with my wiener dog finn which he's actually sleeping sleeping right underneath us right now most episodes finn's directly behind me yeah <laughs> doing things to his bed or uh being a menace sometimes i have to put his ball away yeah so definitely him all things animals um very into fashion so uh you know that's one of my big hobbies reading um and i love i love pilates as well pilates yes you yeah. do that um, favorite thing about me? Oh my gosh, there's way too many to even say. <laughs> That's the right answer. <laughs> um, honestly, it's 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 your sincerity and and truly like the best heart that you have, and I think it comes through in in your show and just wanting to help others. And I I truly think that's one of my favorite things about you. Oh, thank you. Um, what is your next big vacation? that you want to take and Ooh. I have and that I have not agreed to. I have many lined up. Um, I think I'd like to go back. I think I'd like to do South of France again because I loved it 
so, so much. I think it was one of the favorite places I've ever been to. Um, and I'd love to do Spain in the summer. Um, looking long term, I'd love to go to Sri Lanka as well. Sri Lanka? I was not yeah. expecting that. I, yeah. That's here like, I thought I knew all the answers. Oh, well, that you were of course, answer. <laughs> yeah, there, there are more. I'm a huge like travel buff as well. I guess that's another one of my hobbies, planning, fantasizing and, you know, just dreaming about traveling. So, you know, one day when all my real estate ventures can can pay me enough, I'd love to for us to to buy a place together and, and spend some significant time in Europe. So that's kind of one of my main whys as to all of this. So, yeah, it usually points me back to Europe. But Sri Lanka is another one I just would love to go to. Yeah, I jokingly tell people that uh, you have an excellent skill for spending money. <laughs> that I do. <laughs> but evidently I have an, an excellent yeah. skill for making it too in large quantities. So, um, you know, there's there's two sides to that and, and uh, you know, you can find a way to make it work. One thing that I'm, you know, you didn't ask me, but uh, I'll just say it. So, uh, Jordan, you are extremely creative and uh, you're very good at planning things, as you said. Um, so you are on, so our wedding, Jordan planned every last detail and made it this crazy little fairy tale. And I, uh, I showed up, but, uh, you did pretty much everything else. I, I yeah. wrote a lot of checks and paid a lot of money, but, uh, I showed up and tell everyone about what you accomplished and, uh, the really special honor that you got. We got. Oh yeah, we got. Yeah. <laughs> You're in it too, right? <laughs> yeah. I was there. Um, yeah, but I mean, really, it was your hard work that paid off. Yeah, that was um, a year of my life that was so much fun. Um, I pretty much spent every single night planning that wedding, so my whole heart and soul went into that. But um, yeah, we uh, we we recently got featured in uh, Style Me Pretty, the wedding blog. I don't know for for you real estate. Um, you know, individuals, I don't know if you're too familiar with that, but in the wedding world, it's a, it's a huge deal. So really excited um, to be featured on there. Yeah, it's the yeah, it's the wedding blog, right? It's it's the yeah. number one kind of publication that you would want to pretty much globally. Yeah, globally. Yeah. So and this is all just, you know, everything you did, you put into it. And, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so impressed by you and all the things that you do. And I hope Thanks. you can find a way to uh, to get that out there for more people and, and yeah. do more stuff like that. I've been yeah, I'm proud pushing, of it. pushing Joe to start, a, you know, some social media presence about all her hobbies and passions because she's uh, she's pretty awesome. But uh, anyways, topic for another day. <laughs> Thanks for, for joining me downstairs, Joe. Thanks and so much for having me on the podcast. Yeah, I'm glad we were finally able to make it happen. So, mm -hmm. anyways, thank it. Thank you, everyone, for uh, for watching. We'll uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching today's episode. Just a friendly reminder to please rate and review this podcast on iTunes. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure that you smash the like and subscribe and notification bell, uh, and also leave a comment. And hey, while you're at it, why not share this episode with somebody you think it could help? It helps this podcast grow, and I would really appreciate it. Thanks again. We'll see you on the next episode. <laughs>